Okay, thanks Lumel, for the invitation and the introduction. I'm happy to be here to give a talk. So I'm going to talk about rookie dimension of rough categories today. It's joint work with Laurent Cote from Harvard University. And I'm a synthetic topologist, but this has something to do with algebraic geometry. But I just have some kind of basic knowledge of algebraic geometry, so please stop me when you find that something is confused and I'll try to well, explain it. Okay, so let's start with some basic setup. So I'm going to care about a triangulated category. So I will use this notation to denote the triangulated category. So here, delta is a collection of distinguished triangles in this category T, and the sigma here denotes the shift functor So usually the notation people use is this shift up by one. And also I assume that the home spaces, they are K linear. So K is the ground field we work with. Also in the applications, these spaces will be Z graded or Z mod two graded. Okay, so now let's introduce the definition. It's called generation time. Sorry, time. So let's take an object in our category T. Let's call it G. And I introduced the notation G bracket N to denote the full subcategory of our category T satisfying the following property. So it's closed under taking there are some summand and shifts. Also for any object, I mean except taking these kind of operations, we're only allowed to take at most n plus one cones. And above operations. So this is a perfectly defined, well-defined full subcategory. And then we call G is a strong generator if and only if there exists a natural number N. such that this is equal to the whole category. And then we can define the generation time of such a object.
is defined to be minimal of all such and minimum of all and such that G and is equal to the whole category. Okay, so now we can introduce the key notion today, which is a rookier dimension. So before doing that, let's define something called the Orloff spectrum. Orloff spectrum of T is defined to be the collection, collection of all generation times of its strong generators. And uh, the Rukia dimension And I'll use a notation R dim is defined to be the minimal element in the set of this all of spectrum. Okay, so any question about this definition? Okay, great. Now the motivating question for today's talk is when the category T has geometric origin, How to understand the Rooker dimension of our category using some geometric quantity? So I'll give you two examples. So example one, so let's consider Y to be a smooth, actually doesn't have to be smooth, quasi-projective variety. And in this case, we can consider T to be the derived category of coherent sheaves of the variety Y. So in this case, there's a conjecture for Orloff. Oh, okay. I'll keep writing. Let me see if this pen works better. Anyway, so let me continue. There's a conjecture for Orloff. Oh, this is much better saying that the Rooker dimension, well, in this case, the conjecture on the setting where Y is smooth. Let me move right here, Y is smooth. The Rooker dimension of the arcadic coherent sheaf of Y is equal to the dimension of Y. So the geometric meaning of this Rooker dimension in this case should be a dimension of the underlying variety. So there are many results um, in this direction. Well, people have tried to prove that this conjecture holds for many examples. So the new example that we covered by our work is the following. So theorem joined with Cote. 
Orlov's conjecture. Holds. Maybe this is more readable. Okay. <laughs> or okay, I can I try a new one. Okay. Well, let's continue. So the result says that Orlov's conjecture holds for Y. Toric dimension at most three over C. So maybe I should say equal to C because the dimension is strictly less than three. Well, the result is known before. This is a new case covered by our paper. And of course, there's extension of this conjecture when y is not smooth. So let's see, non-smooth example, new example. Include, well, Toric boundary divisor with underlying dimension and most three. Again, it's over C. All right, so this is the purely algebraic geometric statement. So any question about this? So in this case, why fully and the dimension three? Or... Yes, toric dimension three and it's a variety over complex numbers. Yeah, there are three, three assumptions, three assumptions here. Yes. Um, so in previous approaches to this conjecture, people always try to find out this explicit G there. But in this approach, uh, there's no explicit G, but we have some kind of estimate like, like this, yeah. So any other question? So then is there any, I mean, for Sophie? Mm -hmm. True, yes. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there, there are, there are. So like some the pesto surfaces, I mean, because there, well, you can just to try to find out an explicit uh, generator, you compute it generation time. And also I'd like to add that there's a fact proved by Rukir himself. Um, this dimension here is always bounded below by dimension of this variety. So to prove, to prove any kind of statement like this, you just need to prove the upper bound also given by dimension of the variety Y. And uh, one way of doing so is to find an explicit generator and compute its generation time is at most dimension of variety. Okay. Okay, uh, small I think surface. I, I, I think I would say some of them is, is known, but but I, not not all lot of them. I, I I need to check. Yeah. Um, well in previous proofs, yes but not in our proof. Okay. Uh, the next question is what about is known for low vector space? 
Yes, uh, right. Um, the result is known for the puzzle surface, but I'm not exactly sure what kind of exceptional collection they take there to compute the generation type. Yeah, but for the surface, you do know the Yes, yes. My 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 point is, um, I'm not sure if the generation time is realized by the exceptional collection on the puzzle surface, but all of the conjecture is proved for those dial surfaces. So this is this by this uh, right Yeah, I, 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 I need to check. This is something I, I didn't prepare, sorry. But I mean, uh, for the solvent of surface, you don't have a exception of surface. Mm -hmm. You have a fund of surface. Yes. Uh, right. Um, I mean, Yeah, for me, well, exceptional collections, they will give you some kind of explicit generator. You can try to compute their generation type. And for, say, more general varieties, we don't have this exponential collection. And uh, if you can somehow find some kind of generator and you can compute generation time is small enough, you'll prove all of conjecture. But the statement of the theorem is insensitive to, to that kind of Explicit construction of generator is really proved by mirror symmetry. It, it's about trans, tra translating this kind of upper bound into, well, it's equivalent to say, if this variety Y has some kind of mirror given by symptom manifold, we have some kind of flexible way of trying to boundary create dimension of the Rafka category from above. And you use mirror symmetry to draw conclusion on the other side. And in, in that case, I can find well, the generator which actually realizes the, this kind of rookie dimension, but it's not so clear to me how what, what they correspond to on the mirror side. Okay, so this is an example. I'll, I'll talk about proof of this theorem later. So another example is the, the wrapped kind of category. Of say Weinstein and the fault. So let me define the notion of Weinstein manifold. Definition. So my manifold has dimension 2n, and the lambda here is one form. So this is Weinstein, provided that, first of all, let me write d lambda as omega, this defines a symplectic form. I.e., the omega is closed. Oh, sorry, omega is closed. The omega equals zero. Also, this is non-degenerate. And so now we have a two-form, which is non-degenerate, and we have a one-form. We can define the so-called Liouville vector field. Let's call it V, defined by the formula. This is a dual of lambda with respect to omega. So the contraction of this vector field recovers the one form. So this is called the real vector field. And the condition here is, is complete. So in particular, its flow exists for all time. And it's also gradient-like. Gradient for a proper Morse function. I've mapped to R. 
So the notion of gradient-like means that if we try to apply our vector field to our function, it's always bounded below by some constant times the square of this function. So one example of gradient-like vector field is just a gradient of a function with just some kind of remaining metric. So this is the so say condition one, condition two. This definition of a Weinstein manifold. So let, let, let's see an example of Weinstein manifold. So let M be a closed manifold or smooth infinity manifold of real dimension n. So we can look at its cotangent bundle. And also, so let's, there is a one form of the following form. So qi are the coordinates on our manifold m. And PIs are the dual coordinate to QI. So this is a one form. And you can check that this defines a Weinstein structure on the cotangent bundle of this M. And the Liouville vector field rescales the fiber, well, the flow. And another example would be Stein manifolds. So to find some kind of Morse function there, you just uh, embed your Stein manifold into some kind of higher dimensional I find space and consider the restriction of this function here. That also gives you examples of Weinstein manifolds. Okay, so um, let, let me try to give a very quick definition of the rough kind of category. So, so rough kind of category. Actually, we need to put a, actually the fear derived of kind of category. So for simplicity, let's consider um, this kind of working definition. So the objects are Lagrangian sum manifolds inside my manifold X2N. So in other words, these are Undimensional sum manifold such that the restriction of the synthetic form on this manifold is given by zero. And the word wrapped here means that it's not necessarily compact. And the, the morphism the harm spaces. is given by the so-called Lagrangian third cohomology. Namely, we have two Lagrangians. The harm between them, well, is a cohomology of a chain complex, say generated by intersection points. So these two Lagrangians and the differential count holomorphic disks with of the following form with Lagrangian boundary condition. And uh, the composition map is 
So we have three Lagrangians. Um, one L2 tensor over K, um, L2, L3 map to harm L1, L3. Well, this counts holomorphic triangles with Lagrangian boundary condition. And of course, you can try to consider more general configurations here, and that give rise to infinity category. But let's try to just uh, use this definition here. Okay, so it's a Rafka category. And okay, now go back to this question I wrote here. Yeah, let, let, let me use this symbol, sorry, to, to, to denote the, the Rafka category. So then the question is, what's the geometric meaning of that? And I'll tell you a result in this direction. So to do that, I need to introduce another definition. So it's called the minimal number of critical points of a symplectic left wrist vibration. Number of, I'll explain this terminology this later. So what does it mean? It means the following. So uh, symplectic left wrist vibration over our manifold X, roughly speaking, is given by a uh, vibration. So away from finding many points. And has a property that, first of all, if we take our symplectic form, restrict to smooth fibers, it's still symplectic. Also, near each of the singularities, We have local model of the following form. Holomorphic Morse type of singularity and with some other technical conditions. And for such a singular vibration, we just count the number of critical points of this pi. And then this number is just, just defined to be the minimal of all such these guys. Okay. So then one answer to this question is the following. Let's call it proposition. This number here is bounded below by the recurrent dimension of the rough car category plus one. I'll also talk about the proof of this later, but there's application of this statement. So theorem. There exists a Weinstein manifold which is diffeomorphic to the cotangent bundle of S3 
but it's exotic in the sense that this number here is at least four. And uh, the point of this theorem is the following remark. So it's well known that the standard Cotillion uh, bundle of S3 is symplectomorphic to the iPhone quadric. Are equals one inside four dimensional alpha space. And uh, the projection using the first coordinate onto the plane C is a uh, left shift vibration. With only two critical points. So in other words, this number here is very sensitive to the syntax structure. And this is proved by passing through the Rookia dimension. Okay, so any question about this? Exotic in the sense that it is not on Sympathomorphic to the coordinate model S3 in dealt with the standard level 1.4. So, I mean, you mean the cotangent uh, one is not symmetric to this? Right, right. But there is diffeomorphic to that. Hmm. So, any other question? Okay, so now let's talk about the idea of the proofs. So let's just look at a simple example, but you should capture all the, well, some of the key ideas in the proof. So let's try to prove Orloff's conjecture for C star to the N. Well, in this case, it's a FM variety. And the structure sheaf, of course, uh, will be a strong generator. And in that case, you see there, you can just estimate generation time is actually given by dimension. So, so that's a very quick proof, but that's not a proof I'm going to present here. Let, let's try to try, try to vary it unnecessary proof, but it, it might be useful in other contexts. So there's a result, well, in homological mirror symmetry, mirror symmetry. So telling us that on, on the algebraic side, we look at derived category of coherent sheaves over this variety. And on the symplectic side, we look at the rough car category, rough car category of the coordinate bundle of the n-dimensional torus. So as we've seen before, there's a result of Rukir himself telling us that the R dim of this guy is at least a dimension here. Also, we have this mirror symmetry statement. So to prove all of conjecture, it suffices to show that the Rukier dimension of the derived rough car category put in a bundle of the middle torus is at most n. 
So here is a statement. So let M be a smooth closed in dimensional manifold. Then the root here dimension of the Rav Rav category of cotangent model of M is at most N. So in particular, Tars is a special example of this. And uh, yeah, let's see how to prove this. So this is our goal. Let's see how to prove this. So start from M. And now let's take a smooth triangulation. Of M. So once we give this a structure of simplicial complex, we can talk about the stars of the synthesis. And now let U1 up to UK be the closed stars of the zero synthesis of this triangulation. So after smoothing, we can assume that the boundaries are smooth. Okay, so now the union of this set forms a cover of our manifold. M is equal to the union of these open subsets. Sorry, closed subsets. Could I mention zero, some manifold with boundary. And there's a special feature of this cover. Firstly, let's introduce this notation, UI. So I here, is a subset of one to the K. And to K is defined to be the intersection of UIs when small, so small I comes from big I. This is now empty. Only if the cardinality of this set I is at most n plus one. So this is the geometric nature of triangulation. So in other words, if you have a cover of manifold coming from stars zero synthesis of a triangulation, the depth of its cover is at most dimension plus one. Secondly, if UI is not empty, it is contractible. because it is moving to a ball. Okay, so then using this kind of open subsets, we can present our manifold as a co-limit of subsets. So M is equal to the co-limit of UI. So namely, whenever we have inclusion of subsets of the following form, we have inclusion in a converse direction. Then we have a diagram of open subsets. Take the co-limit that gives our, our manifold. Okay, so now we can use this to understand 
the required dimension. So how does it go? So on both sides, I can take the cotangent bundle. Cotangent bundle, bam. It's going by the co-limit. Cotangent bundle of each local piece. Then there are some recent advance on graph categories telling you how to understand this kind of global object using local pieces. So here's a result of Ganatra, Pardon, and Shende. Telling us that if you take the rough category functor on both sides, this guy is, is equivalent the homotopy co limit. Of the replica category. Of these local pieces. And now there are two facts we want to use well exactly if two facts translate two facts over here so first of all the diagram. Has steps. And plus one. Secondly, for each local piece, this is equivalent to the replica category for a closed disk, which is equivalent to category perfect modules of our online field, K. And uh, the exercise to show that the required dimension of this guy is going by zero. Then, using the definition of a homotopy co limit, depth together with estimate of this local piece, we can conclude that the required dimension of this local limb is the most n. So this is the, well, this uh, unnecessarily hard proof of Orlov's conjecture for C star to the N. So any question about this? What do you mean by depth? Depth just means that um, if we have a sequence of categories with non-trivial functors in between in this Gordon Dick construction, the K here is at most N plus one. Because in this case, well, for, for open subsets, we have these inclusions. And the inclusion here is translated to functors between Foucault categories. And because the inclusion, well, the depth of the cover corresponding to the sequence of non-trivial inclusion open subsets has depth at most N plus one. If we just apply the Foucault functor, the non-trivial functor, well, these are required to non trivial functors. The chain of the following form will also have depth and most n plus one. Uh, can, can you are, you mean? Oh, here, yeah, they, they, they should not be, well, fully faithful. Yeah, for the first one in this case. Uh, I think the answer is yes, but I can give you a short answer or, or a reasonable answer in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Any other question? And what do you mean by estimating the boundary? So, 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 so the point is, so let's, what kind of surface? Let's imagine we have a triangulation locally of this form. And if we take the star at this point, you will get some kind of piecewise smooth object. I don't want to deal with this kind of object. I just smooth it out. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me say 
a few words about how to prove this for the general case. Well, as, as we have seen before, cotinium bundles are special Weinstein manifolds. So in general, you cannot expect to cover your manifold by cutting a bundle of balls. So you have to allow some kind of singularity. And uh, there's a recent work of Daniel Alvarez Gavella, Ilya Ashberg, Nadler, it's the so-called aborealization. program. So the slogan of this program is, well, Weinstein manifolds are like cotinian bundles over singular spaces. Maybe I'll say it's well-behaved singular spaces. So what does it mean? It means the following. So let's look at, at an example. Let's say on uh, once punctured, punctured torus. And uh, the point is you can choose a Weinstein structure there such that a skeleton, well, namely those uni the union of stable sub manifolds of the Weinstein Morse function you have has the following form. Or in other words, uh, this once punctured torus, its deformation, well, has a deformation retract to a theta graph. And now the point is we can try to cover the theta graph by two pieces. We just well cut in between, and we'll have we we'll obtain two t-type singularities. So there's an alternative way of describing these singularities as some kind of Lagrangian submanifold inside the bundle of R. So this so-called A two. A boreal Lagrangian singularity. So it's a following form. So let's look at cotinian bundle of the real line. And let's draw a line here. This is a zero section. And let's imagine we have a point here continue one of the cotinian fibers. And as we've seen before, the Liouville flow corresponding to scale in the fiber direction. So we just apply the Liouville flow to this point. So you can check that this object inside the amount of R is a Lagrangian submanifold away from singularity here. And this object, well, is thought to be equivalent to this object. So the point is, we can try to find the neighborhood of this guy. To form a Weinstein manifold, it's boundary. So here. Similarly here,
and we glue these two pieces together to recover this one punct torus. Right. And so their result of organization says that theorem AGEN. For a special class of Weinstein manifold, let me just say with some assumptions. It well, it's skeleton. is arboreal. So, and I, I will not define what arboreal is. I will just say arboreal Lagrangians is a class of Lagrangian singularity. And there's only finite, finite many of them each dimension. So this A2, well, this kind of T-shaped singularity is an example of borrow singularity. Another example of a borrow singularity is a so-called A3 singularity. Sits inside codinant bundle of R2. The point is, oh, maybe I should draw it here. So it's inside codinant bundle of R2. And let's put this kind of T-shaped one away from this kind of zero section. And we have a big zero section here. This is R2. And we just uh, use the flow to get a two-dimensional object from this T-shaped Lagrangian we've understood before. So we have three sheets and uh, Take the union of them. This is this is a two a three sitting inside the amount of R two. And uh, anyway, the, the the point is using this theorem, we can try to cover Weinstein manifold using local pieces of this following form. Local building block. And the kind of category of these objects is, well, it's particularly simple. So the rough kind of category of this kind of A3 sector, namely a neighborhood of this kind of Lagrangian singularity is isomorphic to this quiver representation category. Then using this, well, also there's a the fact that the Rukia dimension of a quiver well, has two cases. It's either zero when Q is of ABE type. It's one when Q is of Oh, in other cases. So we can just do the same thing as before. We have this skeleton of our Weinstein manifold. We take some kind of triangulation of this stratified object. And the local building blocks are given by this kind of representation category. 
and because it comes from triangulation, the depth of its cover is at most a dimension plus one. And we have the understanding of the dimension of its local pieces. So that actually explains why our theorem has this kind of assumption, dimension at most three, because any quiver with at most four vertices, well, is of ADE type. So we can apply this result, result here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just said many things in words. So, so, so any question about this? But I mean, you know, to, to, to the AD type, do you prefer to arrow to what? Yes, yes. The, the, the point is, this kind of arboreal singularities, they are, they are enumerated by, they're indexed by rooted trees. And for each rooted tree, there's a canonical orientation you can put on arrows. Namely, let's look at this A2. Let's call this the root. And for a pair of vertices, we define the orientation on the arrow connecting them from the point which is oh, far, more far away from the root to the one which is closer to the root. And for any rooted tree of with and most four vertices, you can put the orientation there in this way, and then it recovers this. Mm -hmm. And this theorem comes from this representation category with pilot tree. I'll say it again. When trees AD, yeah. there are finite tree. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it, it, exactly. So it's the Gabriel's theorem. Okay, I think I'm almost out of time, so I think it's a good, good place to stop. Thanks. <laughs>